April 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 31 and 32 from the Old Testament. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. He said to them, Today I am a hundred and twenty years old. I am no longer able to get about, and the Lord has said to me, You will not cross the Jordan. As for the Lord your God, he is about to cross over before you. He will destroy these nations before you and dispossess them. As for Joshua, he is about to cross before you, just as the Lord has said. The Lord will do to them just what he did to Sion and Og, the Amorite kings, and to their land which he destroyed. The Lord will deliver them over to you, and you will do to them according to the whole commandment I have given you. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or tremble before them. For the Lord your God is the one who is going with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Then Moses called out to Joshua in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you will accompany these people to the land that the Lord promised to give their ancestors, and you will enable them to inherit it. The Lord is indeed going before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Then Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the Levitical priest, who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, and to all Israel's elders. He commanded them, at the end of seven years, at the appointed time of the cancellation of debts, at the feast of temporary shelters, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God in the place he chooses, you must read this law before them within their hearing. Gather the people, men, women, and children, as well as the resident foreigners in your villages, so that they may hear and thus learn about and fear the Lord your God, and carefully obey all the words of this law. Then their children, who have not known this law, will also hear about and learn to fear the Lord your God, for as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Then the Lord said to Moses, the day of your death is near. Summon Joshua and present yourselves in the tent of meeting so that I can commission him. So Moses and Joshua presented themselves in the tent of meeting. The Lord appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud that stood above the door of the tent. Then the Lord said to Moses, You are about to die, and then these people will begin to prostitute themselves with the foreign gods of the land into which they are going. They will reject me and break my covenant that I have made with them. At that time, my anger will erupt against them, and I will abandon them and hide my face from them until they are devoured. Many disasters and distresses will overcome them, so that they will say at that time, Have not these disasters overcome us because our God is not among us? But I will certainly hide myself at that time because of all the wickedness they will have done by turning to other gods. Now write down for yourselves the following song and teach it to the Israelites. Put it into their very mouths so that this song may serve as my witness against the Israelites. For after I have brought them to the land I promised to their ancestors, one flowing with milk and honey, and they eat their fill and become fat, then they will turn to other gods and worship them. They will reject me and break my covenant. Then when many disasters and distresses overcome them, this song will testify against them, for their descendants will not forget it. I know the intentions they have in mind today, even before I bring them to the land I have promised. So on that day, Moses wrote down this song and taught it to the Israelites. And the Lord commissioned Joshua, son of Nun, Be strong and courageous, for you will take the Israelites to the land I have promised them, and I will be with you. When Moses finished writing on a scroll the words of this law in their entirety, he commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, Take this scroll of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. It will remain there as a witness against you. For I know about your rebellion and stubbornness. Indeed, even while I have been living among you to this very day, you have rebelled against the Lord. You will be even more rebellious after my death. Gather to me all your tribal elders and officials so I can speak to them directly 
about these things and call the heavens and the earth to witness against them. For I know that after I die, you will totally corrupt yourselves and turn away from the path I have commanded you to walk. Disaster will confront you in the days to come because you will act wickedly before the Lord, inciting him to anger because of your actions. Then Moses recited the words of this song from start to finish in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel. Listen, O heavens, and I will speak. Hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My teachings will drop like rain. My sayings will drip like the dew. As rain drops upon the grass and showers upon new growth. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord. You must acknowledge the greatness of our God. As for the rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are just. He is a reliable God who is never unjust. He is fair and upright. His people have been unfaithful to him. They have not acted like his children. This is their sin. They are a perverse and deceitful generation. Is this how you repay the Lord, you foolish, unwise people? Is he not your father, your creator? He has made you and established you. Remember the ancient days? Bear in mind the years of past generations. Ask your father and he will inform you, your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided up humankind, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the heavenly assembly. For the Lord's allotment is his people. Jacob is his special possession. The Lord found him in a desolate land, in an empty wasteland where animals howl. He continually guarded him and taught him. He continually protected him like the pupil of his eye. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that hovers over its young. So the Lord spread out his wings and took him. He lifted him up on his pinions. The Lord alone was guiding him. No foreign god was with him. He enabled him to travel over the high terrain of the land. And he ate of the produce of the fields. He provided honey for him from the cliffs and olive oil from the hardest of rocks, butter from the herd, and milk from the flock, along with the fat of lambs, rams, and goats of Bashan, along with the best of the kernels of wheat, and from the juice of grapes you drank wine. But Jeshurun became fat and kicked. You got fat, thick, and stuffed. Then he deserted the God who made him, and treated the rock who saved him with contempt. They made him jealous with other gods. They enraged him with abhorrent idols. They sacrificed to demons, not God, to gods they had not known, to new gods who had recently come along, gods your ancestors had not known about. You have forgotten the rock who fathered you and put out of mind the God who gave you birth. But the Lord took note and despised them because his sons and daughters enraged him. He said, I will reject them. I will see what will happen to them, for they are a perverse generation, children who show no loyalty. They have made me jealous with false gods, enraging me with their worthless gods. So I will make them jealous with a people they do not recognize. With a nation slow to learn, I will enrage them. For a fire has been kindled by my anger, and it burns to lowest Sheol. It consumes the earth and its produce and ignites the foundations of the mountains. I will increase their disasters. I will use up my arrows on them. They will be starved by famine, eaten by plague and bitterly stung. I will send the teeth of wild animals against them along with the poison of creatures that crawl in the dust. The sword will make people childless outside and terror will do so inside. They will destroy both the young man and the virgin, the infant, and the gray-haired man. I said, I want to cut them in pieces. I want to make people forget they ever existed. But I fear the reaction of their enemies, for their adversaries would misunderstand and say, Our power is great, and the Lord has not done all this. They are a nation devoid of wisdom, and there is no understanding among them. I wish that they were wise and could understand this, and that they could comprehend what will happen to them. How can one man chase a thousand of them, and two pursue ten thousand? 
unless the rock had delivered them up and the Lord had handed them over. For our enemy's rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies concede. For their vine is from the stock of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes contain venom, their clusters of grapes are bitter, their wine is snake's poison, the deadly venom of cobras. Is this not stored up with me, says the Lord? Is it not sealed up in my storehouses? I will get revenge and pay them back. At the time their foot slips, for the day of their disaster is near, and the impending judgment is rushing upon them. The Lord will judge his people and will change his plans concerning his servants when he sees that their power has disappeared and that no one is left, whether confined or set free. He will say, Where are their gods? the rock in whom they sought security, who ate the best of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your refuge. See now that I, indeed I am he, says the Lord, and there is no other God besides me. I kill and give life. I smash and I heal and none can resist my power. For I raise up my hand to heaven and say, As surely as I live forever, I will sharpen my lightning-like sword and my hand will grasp hold of the weapon of judgment. I will execute vengeance on my foes and repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword will devour flesh. The blood of the slaughtered and captured the chief of the enemy's leaders. Cry out, O nations, with his people, for he will avenge his servant's blood. He will take vengeance against his enemies and make atonement for his land and people. Then Moses went with Joshua, son of Nun, and recited all the words of the song to the people. When Moses finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Keep in mind all the words I am solemnly proclaiming to you today. You must command your children to observe carefully all the words of this law, for this is no idle word for you. It is your life. By this word you will live a long time in the land you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. Then the Lord said to Moses that same day, Go up to this Abarim hill country, to Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab opposite Jericho, and look at the land of Canaan that I am giving to the Israelites as a possession. You will die on the mountain that you ascend and join your deceased ancestors. Just as Aaron, your brother, died on Mount Hor and joined his deceased ancestors. For both of you rebelled against me among the Israelites at the waters of Meribar Kadesh in the desert of Zin, when you did not show me proper respect among the Israelites. You will see the land before you, but you will not enter the land that I am giving to the Israelites. God, somebody on uh, Facebook the other day posted a picture of money and said, this is the God that we now worship. I couldn't agree more. And when I was recording uh, chapter 32, where it gets to where you say, where are their gods, the rock in whom they sought security. And I think so much about all the gods that we have in our life now, money, security, comfort, You know, I even think about when we go to church and we have comfortable chairs to sit and listen to the pastor talk for what we hope is a short amount of time because we're in a hurry to get to the game or shopping or back to work or whatever, whatever our next God is that day. I don't know why we don't take this more seriously, God. Obviously, from the song that you gave Moses to sing to the people of Israel, the people you loved, the people that were your people, hand chosen by you. You were being really clear with them about their gods and the gods in the future that they would worship. And that song might as well have been written for us in this year. And how we handle our Christianity or don't handle it. God, today, I just want people's hearts to be on fire for you. I don't want there to be dull faith. I don't want there to be deluded faith. I don't want there to be worship that's sidetracked by things of the world. 
I so want everyone's heart to be yours and everyone's life to be lived for you. I guess if that actually happened, we would be on our way to heaven. God, it's something that my heart now aches for. And I remember going through so many times of my life that I couldn't be bothered with church. I definitely couldn't be bothered with a relationship with you. Never picked up my Bible for years at a time. Collected dust on the dust on the bookshelf. I wonder how many people prayed for me back then. That I would get with it. That I would understand. That I would quit sacrificing my life to God's. God, today I just... I just ask for your will in all of these people's lives. Who aren't madly in love with you. Who don't read your word. Who don't walk hand in hand with you throughout the day. I mess up every day, but... I'm blessed that I get to get up in the morning and work on our relationship another day and try and figure this out as a human being. God, be with all those people who don't have you in their life. Be with all those people who have pushed you out of their life. Be with all those people who might not have ever heard of you, God. And allow us to do what we're supposed to do, which is go. Go and tell people about you. Go and tell them that they're gods. Whom they have sought security in. Have no power. No power at all. In your son's name we pray. Amen.